Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Church's Incarnation. My name is Sheila Williams. Today is man for us, the people of the parish. As you are turning off your cell phone, please, and your electronic devices, we would like to remind you that during the Our Father's final key for any time in church, masks are required for everyone, regardless of your vaccination status. When called for for communion, please remain three feet apart and stop at the first view. Wait for the priest or deacon to say, and it's the body of Christ, and you respond, amen. Today is the fourth Sunday of, of ordinary times. Easter. Oh, Easter. I mean, Easter. 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 Thank you. The mass intention today, as I said, is for us, the people of the parish. Thank you for coming through the weather. Thank you for coming through the rain. God is good. And, and I just think it's a blessing. Rain is a blessing for me. Just to hear him cleanse us. Amen. Our celebrant today is Father John, assisted by Jesus Bell. Our lectures are Yvette Gray and Amy Cole with Jordan. Our altar servers are Martin Cole, Tawana Harrison, and Brother Lawrence. Brother Lawrence. Thank you. Please stand and join us in our opening song on page one, on page 65, Christ is Risen from the Dead. Page 65.
Lead us to share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before. We live and rest with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the book of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed that the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. Now when they had heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, what are we to do, my brother? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient, we will suffer for doing what is good. This is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our, sin, bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you have gone astray like sheep. But you now you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your soul. The word of the Lord. shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opened his for him, and the sheep hear his voice, as the shepherd called his own sheep by name and lead them out. When he had driven out all of his own, he walks ahead of them, 
and the sheep following him because they recognized his voice. But they would not follow a stranger. They would run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today is traditionally called the Good Shepherd Sunday. And so our readings speak to us today in a special way about shepherds and shepherding roles. In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Peter demonstrated his shepherding role. How? By partly preaching to his audience, a preaching that touched their hearts, and they asked him, Brother, what shall we do? He tells them, repent. And at the end of his powerful preaching, we are told 3,000 people were enrolled into the church. Peter's shepherding role. In our second reading from 1 Peter, again, Peter. Teaches, advises, and counsels his listeners, this time about the need for patience in suffering, suffering for doing what is right. You are not going to counsel them. You are not going to receive advice. That's exactly what Peter is doing in the second reading playing his shepherding role before his listeners. In our gospel reading, we see shepherding role par excellence in the person of Jesus Christ. He speaks to us about the relationship between him and his flock, how he cares, loves, knows, Lives and walks ahead of them. And finally, telling us his manifesto that his mission is to make sure that his flock has life and life in abundance. 
Indeed, my dear friends, Jesus our God is the good shepherd. Hebrews 13 20 calls him the great shepherd. 1 Peter 5 4 calls him the chief shepherd. And he tells us in our gospel reading that he is the chief. Sorry, he is the shepherd and he is also the gate. You and I must pass through him in order to inherit eternal life. All of us who are believers in him, all of us who receive adoption through him, Ephesians 1 5. The challenge before us today is to participate to share in the shepherding role of Christ as shepherds also. In various ways, at different levels and capacities, we are shepherds in the family, in the workplace, in the church, in our relation of life, in your marriage, name it, in your day-to-day -day encounter with people, you are a shepherd. Make no mistake about it. Shepherds are deacons, priests, bishops, popes. Yes, indeed, they are. But that doesn't exist the least. You, you, you are a shepherd. The difference is may be the level of the priest may not be at one level. But the truth remains that in one way or the other, you have somebody proceeding to your care. You have somebody you encounter in your day to day life. You are the shepherd by that fact. And so, what the advice of Peter is for you and me, 1 Peter 5 2 to 3. Jesus' advice to Peter, John 21 15 to 17, is for you. Tend my flock, feed my sheep, look after my flock. By extension, that exaltation is for you, is for me. What type of shepherd is Jesus? He is a shepherd of selfless love. We know how he selflessly attended to his sheep. Pouring every bit of blood in him, hiding nothing, reserving nothing for the welfare of the sheep. He is a shepherd of sacrificial service. We remember, even in this teaching, he would want to go and get some rest, but because the sheep, there's need for the sheep to be taught, he would sacrifice his confidence, sacrifice his sheep, sacrifice his sleep, and go ahead and teach the sheep. That's the kind of shepherd he is. A shepherd of sacrificial, sacrificial service. He is also a shepherd of vicarious suffering and death. Recall, Jesus didn't have to die on the cross. He committed no crime. Yet he died. For who? You and I. His sheep. By no means, by no standards, Jesus did not merit death on the cross. He died in the way for our good, the good of his blood. Vicarious suffering and death. There are many more limits of those three things. And today, 
as partakers, as top records in the shepherding role of Jesus. We are being challenged to put into practice what we learn from Jesus. It is not enough to talk about I'm the shepherd, I'm the gate. It is not enough to talk about good shepherd something. The fundamental question is, where am I in that conversation? How does it apply to me? That's the key. Contextualization, application. Begin to ask yourself, begin to do a life review and ask yourself, what type of shepherd am I? How do I carry on my shepherding role? Am I a good shepherd after the mind of Christ? Or am I just any kind of shepherd? No! That I get me good qualifies the kind of shepherd Jesus wants you and I to be. Permit me to make some suggestions, to give some clues on how we can strive to be good shepherds after the mind of Christ. Number one clue. By always showing love, care, and compassion to the flock entrusted into our care. Always, not sometimes, not occasionally, always showing love, care, and compassion to the flock. Not a true clue how we can strive to be good shepherds after the mind of Christ. By being merciful, patient, and forgiving to the flock. Look at the example of Christ. Even for the sheep that wandered away, Jesus didn't cause that sheep. He jumped. Imagine the 99 uh, moving in the right way. This two, you stupid sheep, you decided to go. Anyway, you get what you want. That's what you choose. I don't care. Even if you die. Jesus didn't cause that sheep that went astray. He was patient, merciful, and forgiving. That's the example he's setting for you and I. Third clue. By being sensitive and resourceful to the needs of the sheep. There are some pictures of the good shepherd. You see him on his shoulder carrying the weak sheep. Maybe the wounded sheep, injured sheep. When the gospel tells us he knows them by name, what does that mean? He sees everything about them, knows their situation, knows their condition, knows which one is sick and which one is healthy, and what needs to be done to the sick, the injured, and the wounded. That's our example. To be sensitive and resourceful to the needs of the sheep. Number four. Fourth clue. By making sacrifices, at times putting your life on the line to save the sheep. Look at this one. The gospel really puts it beautifully well. He leads them, meaning that he will be in front of them and they will be behind. Why? So that he will drive them away. Wolves, lions, whatever may harm the sheep. That's why he goes in front of them. Making sacrifices. Imagine Jesus 
setting himself in front to fight wars so that they don't destroy the sheep. You put in your life on the line to save the life of the sheep. That's Jesus' example for you and I. Clue number five. By not being oppressive, by not exploiting, marginalizing, and oppressing the sheep. Look at Jesus' example. Beautiful picture. He never exploited any sheep. He never took advantage of any sheep. And that is why it's kept out of God 1 to 10. Condemns all those shepherds who exploit the sheep. Use them, milk them to death. Do whatever harm to them. Jesus didn't do that. That's our example. That's our model. Clue number six. By understanding, mentoring, and protecting the sheep, I call them by name. Before you call somebody by name, you must know the person. You must understand the person. Do you understand their children? <coughs> Ask yourself, do I understand my children? Do I read the emotions and feelings? My wife, do I understand her? Do I understand my husband? Do I know his or her feelings and emotions? When I, do I understand and respect that? Many of our marriages, many of our families are in trouble because we have failed to understand the feelings and the emotions of one another. Whether children, whether partner, whether spouse, whether friend, I don't care. But the fact is that many of us have failed to understand and to mentor and to respect the feelings and emotions of the other person. Number seven, by working for the common good of the flock, imagine Jesus in the parable. A shepherd has hundred sheep, one went astray. He left the ninety-nine to look for the one that went astray. You begin to see the whole idea of common good among the flock, among the sheep. That's Jesus' example. Not being a Jews. My favorite, my left favorite, my this, my that. Jesus watched for the common good of the flock, leaving you and I a powerful example. Clue number eight. By what I call contributing resourcefully to reshare, remove, and make the world a better place for the sheep. When Jesus leads the sheep to greener pastor, what is he doing to make it better for them? Last clue, I don't want to spend more of your time. Clue number nine. By respecting the dignity of every sheep. You can put it the other way around. By respecting the dignity of every human person. No matter the differences, no matter the diversities we experience in life. That's what Jesus did. For the sheep. There are nowhere have I read unless you that Jesus discriminated, that Jesus racketed out, Jesus did this excluded. No! He respected the dignity of every sheep, no matter the color, no matter the health condition, no matter the sickness condition, no matter what. And that's a powerful example for all of us. And so, my dear friends, Jesus gives us a powerful lesson today as a good shepherd. And remember, 
as you do your best to follow in the footsteps of Jesus' shepherding road, as a shepherd also, you are the world, will not be in vain. God will surely reward you for being a good shepherd. 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8. John 17, 2 to 4. And of course, powerfully Paul puts it this way. Your labor will not be in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, 56. And so, dear friends, I ask you, as we celebrate this special feast today, join me to continue to pray for the graces to follow as shepherds after the example of Jesus, the good shepherd. So that at the end of time, all of us, together with the flock entrusted in our cares, we may go to live with Jesus, our master, our mother, our everything as a shepherd, live with him eternally in the kingdom of God our Father. May God help us through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Please stand. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God. God sent us the good shepherd who came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And so we have confidence that our needs will be satisfied. For Pope, for Pope Francis and all the bishops, that they may shepherd the church as a good shepherd would, leading us all through that valley, down the right path, to verdant pastures of goodness and kindness. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders here and around the world, that they may find in the good shepherd, an example to emulate as they lead their people with care and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. For an end to violence in our communities, in our cities, and across our nation, so that we may all be free from the fear and trauma that violence brings. Let us pray to the Lord. For Catholics of all ages, that we may be open to the call of the Good Shepherd to ordain and lay ministries. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us, that we may find the courage to repent of our sins and our failures to do the right thing. Knowing that we can find in our God forgiveness and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of Helen Hennings, Elsie Williams, and John Nichols. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all the sick all over the world. That God will strengthen them and grant them healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for peace in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, God of mercy and love, your son came to us a sinful people and shared your unparalleled mercy and love with sinners and outcasts. He showed us the way. May we find the strength to share your mercy and love with all who need it, not just those who deserve it, as we ask you to hear our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd. Amen. Amen. Constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your heart. We the Lord. Let us return to the Lord our God. He is right in death. It is really right and just. I do them that salvation. At all times I claim your love. That in this time above all, to love you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us. The defense of I never please our cause before you. He is a sacrificial victim who dies no more. The land once lent, he lives forever. We have overcome with pastoral joy. Every land, every people exalts in his prayer. And even the heavenly power with angelic hope sing together the ending hymn of his love as that land. <laughs> Blessed are all the saints, Martin, who have pleased you throughout the ages. 
You may merit to bestow earth eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the service of men, I am found by divine people with their consent. And by the help of men, we may be always free from sin and safe from all these ways. As we are aware the blessed God and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory is yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church, and grace us to grant our peace and unity. In accordance with the will, we live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. The sovereignty of peace and peace. Thank you. 
I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back.
kādi kā iedrēm zālēm, un kādi viņu mēļo par vietu, par vietu būtu. Now, next Sunday also, May 7, he recognized the teacher and healthcare worker recognition mass. Uh, we'd like to recognize and show our privilege to all the parishioners who are teachers or healthcare workers in any capacity. That's from the doctor, the medical, to the custodians, the main people, you know, deep clean sheep, whatever it may be, anybody, anybody. Uh, whether or not you're a substitute teacher, <laughs> or retired, whatever it may be. You've mentioned the book, but you are asked to, we'd like to know how many people will pray for us, so please register for the sign up sheet in the back of the church on the rear table. Or call the church off no later than 3 o'clock Tuesday, May 2nd. Tuesday, May 2nd. Uh, and also, you indicate whether you are retired or active. Okay? Uh, and the rest of it, and then three, four. So please stand and have a best day. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, go in peace, the Lord, by your life. Thank you, God. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Thank you, Good Shepherd, for that message teaching us that we are Good Shepherds, too. Thank you for coming with us. Thank you very much. Please join us in our closing song, This Little Light of Mine, on page 